Hello and welcome to Mark's Tech Talk. In this video, I'm going to discuss the rules of constructing a schematic diagram. This is a component level diagram as opposed to a block diagram. Uh, I have a, uh, another video out there on the rules for block diagrams. But for component level schematics, uh, we're going to look at uh, some of the things you should be following when you are drawing or constructing a schematic diagram. First of all, uh, the rules you're going to find are very similar to what you uh, have with a block diagram, but there are some differences. Uh, and similar to the block diagram, in a component level schematic, your signal flow should be from left to right. If you run out of room, then you can go from top to bottom. Uh, so just like as if you're reading a book, uh, signal flow left to right and then top to bottom. When you are uh, drawing your interconnect lines between your components, these are representing conductors. And when you are doing that, you want to minimize number of crossovers and jogs. And the reason for this is you want to follow this diagram with your eyes and any crossover or jog makes it more difficult to follow. Uh, all of your interconnect lines that represent a conductor should be made as short as possible and you generally stick to keeping them either horizontal or vertical. There are some exceptions and that's basically specialized circuits, uh, for example a flip-flop or a bridge rectifier, uh, where it is acceptable to have your lines diagonal. Uh, here is a uh, diagram of a bridge rectifier and you can see you connect the diodes together using diagonal lines for a bridge rectifier like this. Uh, so this is one of the exceptions. Generally, when you're connecting between your components, you want to keep your lines horizontal and vertical uh, with, uh, again, these couple exceptions like this one. Uh, with the component level schematic, you are going to include uh, all of your power sources. And when you put the power sources in the diagram, you should arrange them with the most positive source near the top of your diagram and the most negative on the bottom. Uh, most of your circuits will have a single positive supply that will go across the top of your diagram and the bottom will be connected to ground. So once you uh, draw a horizontal line that indicates the positive voltage on top, uh, no other component should be higher than that. Uh, that positive supply voltage should be the very top of your diagram, no other components that are higher than that. Now, uh, as with a lot of schematics, there are some exceptions to this. Uh, for example, if you have a circuit that has a negative power supply and no positive, uh, it is uh, pretty common that you'll put the negative supply on top and the ground on the bottom uh, if there is no positive supply. So that, again, is an exception. But generally speaking, the general rule is most positive supply on top, most negative on the bottom. Uh, really, really important you do that. Uh, some of the exercises that I do in class, uh, I'll give you some diagrams where this rule is not followed and you have to rearrange the circuit to make it follow this rule. Uh, remember what's important when you're drawing a schematic is not where the components are placed, it's how they're connected together. And you can move around or flip or rotate components as needed uh, in order to have a more understandable uh, schematic that uh, has signal flow left to right, power supply on top, the ground on the bottom, and so on and so forth. Okay, so really uh, remember this rule, a really important one. Okay, uh, in addition to that, once you draw all your components, uh, you want to make sure that uh, you lay it out in such a way that all the components are spread out across your entire diagram. You don't want to have uh, all the components bunched up in one area creating congestion or uh, other areas of your diagram where you don't have any components. You have these large white areas. Uh, a couple other things to note. Uh, once you draw a symbol for your schematic diagram, all of the other components that are uh, similar, for example, if you draw a resistor, all of the resistors on your diagram should be exactly the same size. And similar components, such as a potentiometer, would also be the same size, excepting, for example, the arrow. 
and different kinds of symbols should be in proportion to one another. Uh, so uh, once you draw a resistor, if you next have to draw a capacitor, it should be proportionate to the resistor. And don't make one very large and one very small. Uh, and then again, once you choose a size for any component, all the remaining components of the same type should be the same size. All right. Okay, so uh, again, keep symbols in proportion with the same symbols, uh, same size throughout the schematic. Really important to do that. So that's the primary rules you have to follow when you are constructing a schematic diagram. I uh, hope you enjoyed this edition of Mark's Tech Talk. Stay tuned for more. We'll have some videos on how to actually do this in some programs, for example, AutoCAD and so forth.